Hi, I'm Sen, and I've been a little obsessed with DPR Rian recently, and he just put out an album, Mido, and I really liked the music video for Nerves, so today I'm going to be drawing a scene from that. I haven't done a pencil drawing since January of 2020, and I've also never done a large-scale portrait, so this is going to be very fun. Enjoy! I started out with three screenshots from the music video that I thought might work well. They were all in slightly different positions, and I ended up liking the one where his face is downturned because it fits the dark mood the most. Before I actually begin, I have this habit that I usually do where I like to do a bunch of preliminary work and just sketch the person's face off of images on their Instagram or Pinterest just to get a feel of the most distinctive features so that I know when I'm doing the final drawing. What features are absolutely necessary to make this person look like how they actually look in real life? So for Ian, that's his downturned eyes, his European-shaped nose, and he also has a really prominent philtrum, which is the little structure between your nose and your upper lip. So I wanted to make sure that the shadows would be super pronounced in that area. Next, I'm pulling out my paper. I'm using some Strathmore size 24 by 18, I think it is. And I'm just marking all the edges with masking tape so that there will be a clean white border around the entire edge of the drawing. Since this is the biggest portrait I've ever worked on in my entire life, I did want to add a grid to the reference image just so I had a general idea of where features were supposed to go. Honestly, I've never really been the type to be super strict about grid placement, so I didn't draw the lines on my actual drawing. And later on, I did end up moving certain features around just slightly because I felt like they suited his face more, even if that didn't align with the actual picture reference. Here I'm just using the grid as a general guide for placement of the basic features like brows, eyes, nose, mouth, but this ended up looking nothing like Ian, so I ended up having to adjust a couple things around. I'm going in with a 4B pencil to gently shade the general shadow areas. Something you'll notice about my process is that I like to jump around between different features and different parts of the drawing to kind of even out and kind of compare the dark areas to the light areas. I don't understand how people can draw kind of like a printer and work like one section at a time, because for me, I need to look at the entire drawing as a whole to kind of balance out, okay, this area is darker than this area, but this, lighter, this is lighter than this area, etc. I also started to mark out the general location of his tattoos, and this wasn't entirely necessary because I'm still using a 4B pencil, and the tattoos are pretty dark, so they only need to come in with like 6B, 10B, but I just like to have the general idea of where things are going to be so I can check like their location in relation to other objects. At this point in time, and honestly kind of throughout the entire process, I was like, this doesn't feel like the Christian that I know. And I felt like part of it had to do with the nose mouth area being too big, so I shortened the chin area and moved the mouth slightly up. Now I'm whipping out the 6B pencil, which is just a little bit darker than the 4B, and I'm going back in, shading everything again. Filling in the brows is always a fun part because it feels like you're doing makeup, but on a drawing. So it's just really satisfying, I don't know.
You can probably see the pattern starting to emerge. Here I'm using, I think, an 8B pencil. And I'm going back in yet again to darken up all the shadow areas. And again, I'm kind of bouncing around from different parts of the drawing to make sure that all of them are the right darkness and depth in relation to each other. So it's not just about one area being dark, but it's like, oh, this part of the eye is darker than, for example, these parts of the lips. So I just try to keep all of that in mind as I'm working. At this point, I really wanted to get a sense of how my drawing looked from farther away, so I put it up against the door and walked like 10 feet back just to make sure the proportions were right. And now I'm starting to use charcoal. Full disclaimer, I typically don't like working with quote unquote messy mediums, so I've really only worked with charcoal like three or four times in my entire life, so I don't know if I'm qualified to speak on this, but I feel like my charcoal is a pretty trash quality. Or maybe it was just the fact that the paper I used is on the smoother side, so it didn't really have enough tooth, enough rough edges to catch the graininess of the charcoal on. But anyways, I ended up having to smooth it all out with a paper towel because it was super blotchy in certain places. After applying charcoal to the background, it was pretty clear that I also needed to darken the areas of the face because they just were not dark enough. I'm gonna bring you guys up close for all the final details because that's always my most fun part to do and to watch in process videos. While I definitely wish I could do all these little details at the very beginning because it makes it just so much more fun, that usually just isn't feasible because in the beginning stages you're still moving things around, you know, adjusting proportions, or it might smudge, whether intentionally if you're darkening an area. Sometimes it might just smudge unintentionally if you have, for example, a younger sibling who mishandles your work or you just drop it somewhere. So we all know it's best to leave the teeny tiny details for the very end so that they can be as crisp and clear as possible. Since most of his hairs aren't obviously lying directly flat on his face, I also added this little shadow underneath to kind of give a sense of the 3D topography of his face and make it feel a little bit more lifelike. Again, since my charcoal seems to not be of the best quality and it would not go onto the graphite, I ended up having to scrape some dust off onto the surface of the drawing and just rub it around with my finger to darken up that area. Here I folded the tip of my kneaded eraser into a super flat, thin shape so that I could mark out the area where the necklace was. Using the same kneaded eraser folded into a little nubby shape, I used it to mark out the highlights on the nose and other facial features. Now I'm pulling out a white fabric castell pencil, hoping that it would be better than a Crayola, but it really wasn't. And I'm just using that in conjunction with the kneaded eraser to give the effect of the little hairs that are catching the light. Now that the piece is pretty much finished, I'm just going in with a layer of hairspray as my fixative. And here's the finished piece. 
While I'm not 100% satisfied with this project, and I don't think any artist is ever 100% happy with anything they make, I am pretty proud of how much I learned during this entire process, and also, I got a like from Mr. Ian himself. So that's it, thank you guys for watching, thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye! Oh.